Hello and welcome to another tutorial video. In this video I want to talk about different firmwares uh, that you can install on your uh, Grains module. I already made a video about the Grains module where I introduced a couple of firmwares that you can download from the Ginkgo Synthes website. And in this video I want to show you one firmware that has been developed just recently uh, from Matthias from Germany and I will show you uh, where you can download this and the other amazing firmwares that he's developed and how to use it. So first off, the Grains module is a, a modular clone of the Eurek Grains module, which you can get on the Ginkgo Synthes website. And Ginkgo Synthes also has this page where you can download individual firmwares that have been developed for the Eurek version. And these will just work just as they work for the UREC, will work on your A modular grains as well, which you can see on my other video. Now, Matthias is a developer from Germany, and he has put his mind to creating new firmwares when he got the grains module. And I worked with him on putting them onto GitHub so that we can release them to the wider community. So please follow the link in the description below. Here is the GitHub uh, repository for these new firmwares. And while I'm doing this video, Matthias is actually already working on at least two other firmwares. So um, please stay tuned, there will be more here. The firmwares that we have so far, that Matthias has developed so far, is the uh, ByteBeat Crossfade, the Grains Moors, and Spell or Speak and I will go into each of those in separate videos. In this video, I really only want to talk about the ByteBeat Crossfade firmware. Now, if you are a software developer and you know a little bit about GitHub, then it's easy for you to just clone the repository and get to the codes this way. If you are not a developer, then probably the easiest way for you is to go to the release page and there's the first official release, and you can download a zip file for each of these codes. So I'll just do that here. I just download the zip file and save it. And then you basically have that code. So I'll just open the file. And inside of here, you have the uh, INO file, which you can open in your Arduino IDE, just as I sh I've shown in my other video. So this is how you get to these firmwares, and now I will show you how the ByteBeat Crossfade firmware functions. So now I'm, I have all the knobs turned all the way to the left. When P3 is to the left, I will only hear the byte beats that are selected from knob number one, or the a. So let's listen to that. Let's turn the knob around a little bit. So here's our first byte beat. And if when I turn the knob further around, you will see that it slowly adjusts the algorithm until it settles on the next one. Yeah, and these were the byte beats that you could select from P1. And uh, now let's have a look at the byte beats on P2.
Now, what's interesting is that uh, the P2 knob or the B knob has a pulse width waveform if you turn it all the way to the right, which you don't get on P1. And if you have that going, you can actually adjust that waveform a little bit by uh, turning P1. Let's have a look at that, while P3 is all the way to the right. So basically, you should only hear P the B algorithm, but there's some influence from that. And when I talked to Matthias about this, he said that the Arduino Nano, the chip that is behind the grains, is um, such a tiny computer that it just gets overpowered uh, with some of these algorithms. And because it's overpowered um, or, you know, doesn't catch up to calculate it quickly enough, you get those different artifacts and weird ways and chain and things. So you could say that's a bug. Basically, it creates some interesting noises and I find it quite valuable. So let's have a listen to that. So I just added a little bit of uh, deep space reverb to that. So now let's see what happens when I have the two algorithms on different, the two knobs on two different algorithms and I just move the P3 knob around. So some really interesting new soundscapes can be explored through this. Uh, because you have access to the source code of this, you can actually put in your own byte beats. You can put in your own byte codes into this, and I'll show you how. So first off is you want to open the .ino file, just as you've opened it to upload it into the module. When you scroll down into the code, you can see that this is C or C++ code. I'm actually not quite sure what language this is. But there is a function called process. And this function has all the bytecodes in it. And they are here. So this is what a bytecode is. This is what it's all about. To understand how that works is, is that there's a T, which is a counter, which counts from 0 to for however long um, it can run. And you do some kind of uh, arithmetic to that number. And then uh, what is basically creating the sound is, is that number, and there's some offset with the different potentiometers with uh, P1 and P2, and also with the crossfade with uh, P3. But these are the bytecodes that you can change. And if you don't quite understand what's going on here, and I must be honest, I don't understand what's going on here either. But um, Felix from the Tuesday Night Machines made a fantastic guide and the absolute beginner's guide to coding byte beats. You can find that on his website at nightmachines.tv, or you can also find it on the forum or on his GitHub. So this guide, and it's really, really good. So it's probably the first 
beginner-friendly byte beat documentation that I've ever seen. And going through this, you can actually learn what this does. And you can experiment with a few different ones. Now, I must say there are some really, really complicated byte beats in here. And you can see that these are fairly small. And this is because the Arduino Nano is actually a very low-powered little computer chip, and it can't actually deal with very long byte beats. So keep it small, keep it simple. The Algodrone, which is another module from Tangible Waves, can produce much more complicated byte beats because it is a faster processor and has a lot more. But here you can experiment with your own byte beats, which is really nice. So what you need to do is you need to either add more byte beats by just copying one line at the end, like I've done here, then changing some of the numbers, and then upload the sketch to your module via the USB cable. And then just go and play around with this. I hope you have fun with this. If you have some really cool byte beats that you've tried and that work well, please post them on the forum or make a video or make a SoundCloud file. I would love to hear it. This is very exciting. It's the first time that you can actually go and program your own sounds in the AE Modular system. Thanks for watching.